ustedes. Uh, muchas gracias por la organización de esta jornada uh, científica Santa Mencionales uh, y hasta la victoria siempre. Uh, and that's all I can say in Spanish. But <laughs> uh, uh, which is a language that I like very much, uh, that I understand, let's say, 80, 85%, but I have a little bit of a hard time in speaking. So, uh, I will start the day by making an update on the current state of histone diacetylase inhibitor investigations. Of, uh, as you know, these are promising for the, uh, drugs for, uh, that may be a potential treatment for Friedrich's attacks. Uh, how do you... This one? Okay, yeah. Uh, just a little bit of background, as you all know. Uh, the, the cause of Friedrich is, is an intronic uh, GAA triple repeat expansion in the frataxin gene that results in uh, uh, drastically reduced levels of the protein and uh, this insufficient level of the proteins is, is triggers uh, a, a pathogenic chain that leads eventually to the disease. And so this, the, the, the therapeutic approach I'm going to talk about now is essentially aimed to try and restore higher levels of the protein that are possibly close to normal, but at least close to the levels that we find in uh, heterozygous carriers that, as you know, you know apparent symptom of the disease. Uh, we have learned that uh, a possible mechanism by which the GAA triple repeat expansion inhibits the expression of the gene relates to the way that DNA is packaged uh, to what we call the chromatin structure. Just as a very brief reminder, uh, DNA is not free-floating in the cell nucleus, it's in the tightly packaged uh, with proteins uh, forming a high-order structure that we call chromatin. And the basic unit of chromatin is what is called the nucleosome, and it is basically DNA that is wrapped around the protein core. And this protein core is made of, of, of proteins that we call histones. And there are four types of histones, uh, two molecules of each, for, uh, of each. In, in this protein core, in this histone core, and this, uh, these molecules are called the histone H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. And as you can see, uh, when you look at a nucleus, you have DNA wrapped around, and you have this histone core in the middle with these little tails that are, that are uh, coming out. And these tails are very important because they may be modified, and according to the way these tails are modified, the way that the, the, the packaging uh, may change, the structure of the packaging may change. Uh, there are a number of modifications that may take place on these system tails that include acetylations, phosphorylation, methylation, uh, ubiquitination, etc. There are also changes that may take place in DNA and in particular methylation and there is a, clearly a correlation between changes on DNA and changes in histones. Now, uh, we, one of the most important uh, of this histone modification, this modification of histone tails, is acetylation that has been, um, that has been correlated to the, um, to the fact whether histones are more tightly packed, uh, sorry, nucleosomes are more tightly packaged, and in this way, uh, less DNA is less accessible to transcription factors, or if they are more loosely packaged, then DNA is actually made accessible to transcription factors. Uh, by a large, it's, it's an oversimplification, but uh, let's say for a number of, of uh, purposes it works, if you have more acetylation, the DNA uh, is packaged in a, in a looser manner, it's more accessible to transcription factor, and, it's, uh, and transcription uh, may occur. If histones are deacetylated, um, this uh, uh, leads to a tight uh, packaging uh, association of other proteins like this protein HP1 and essentially silencing of the genes. So when we think we, we, what we think is occurring in, uh, in the DNA, in the, in the frataxin gene, is the fact that because of uh, an effect of GAA repeat expansion, which is clearly recognized by some protein, uh, a mechanism is triggered that leads to histone deacetylation, loss of these acetyl groups, tight packaging of, the, of chromatin, and basically silencing of the taxon gene. So the basic idea for this therapeutic approach is to try and revert this process by acting with some molecules on enzymes that regulate histone acetylation. In particular, 
uh, this category of enzymes, which is called the histone deacetylases, that carries that actually removes uh, these acetyl groups and leads uh, to a to a tight conf uh, chromatin uh, conformation. The idea is that if these enzymes are inhibited, we will have a prevailing effect of the enzymes going in the opposite direction, this histone acetyl transferases. And so we can turn uh, this kind of structure into this one, which is permissible for gene expression. Uh, very briefly, the group of, of uh, uh, Joy Gollespell at the Scripps Research Institute has tested a number of, uh, of histone deacetylase inhibitors uh, that are currently available. These are molecules that are actually already used for the treatment of cancers in particular. Some of them are already in clinical use, like SAA. And for their ability to increase the frataxin in culture cells of patients. And to make a long story short, most of this molecules were totally unable to increase frataxin, they were even had an opposite effect, with the exception of one, which is called BML210, and uh, uh, Joel's group has actually synthesized a series of molecules based on the, on the structure of this one, uh, that for uh, those who want to know is a, uh, sorry, is a, uh, a pimelic uh, benzodiamide, and uh, it is and made a number of molecules that seem to be pretty active in increasing frataxin level in culture cells. Uh, uh, we tested uh, this cell, these molecules uh, uh, in, uh, in a mouse model that we generated years ago, in which uh, a GAA repeat was introduced into the mouse frataxin gene. Uh, this is a short repeat, so it does not have a big effect as, as most of the repeats we find in patients, but it has some effect. And we generated um, homozygous mice for this repeat uh, as a sort of a model for the human disease. And we called these mice the Kiki mice because they are key is the uh, initials of knocking, the, 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 the repeat has been knocked in, and they are homozygous. Uh, these Kiki mice have mildly reduced the level of fracassin because the repeat is not that big. It probably uh, the effect in the mouse is less marked than in humans, but they are nevertheless uh, significantly reproduced. Uh, repro uh, repro well, the levels are low and rep uh, reproducibly low, <laughs> okay, levels of frataxin in most of their tissues. In addition of that, uh, these mice uh, present this, that histone, the loss of acetyls, the histone deacetylation that characterizes the uh, repression of the frataxin gene in human cells as well. So they kind of a model of the, of the uh, genetic and epigenetic changes that occur also in humans. And uh, when we treated uh, these animals uh, with one of these molecules, which was called 106, uh, we could uh, sort of normalize uh, the level of frataxin, both at the RNA level here, as you can see in three different tissues, and at the protein level, as you can see here in the brain. Uh, histones were acetylated again, back to wild-type levels. And uh, of course, uh, these uh, this molecules had no effect on wild-type mice, uh, they did not have the repeat and therefore no particular epigenetic change in that, in that region. At that time, we were showing that the mice were uh, acutely, because this was a short uh, treatment, uh, uh, they only had three injections of this, uh, of this molecule on alternate days, so could very well tolerate the treatment, we had no apparent toxicity, and on top of that, uh, this, this treatment was a sort of correcting a biochemical phenotype that we can see in these animals. So these animals had no uh, particular motor abnormality, the level of frataxin are high enough not to uh, cause any clear pathology, but nevertheless uh, they had some reactive gene expression changes to uh, lower frataxin level that were almost uh, entirely, but you know, largely corrected by, by this treatment. 